Hello everyone and welcome back to Heavy Chess Lab and welcome to round 5 of the Opera Euro Rapid. After losing to Wesley in round 1, Magnus has scored 3 consecutive victories and was now facing former Cuba number 1 Lenior Dominguez with black, as he was attempting to go for 4 in a row. Alright, let's see what happened in the game. We have e4, c5 and Magnus continues to flirt with all these Sicilian Nierdorf variations. Not sure if it's serious or just something he wants to try here in the faster time controls. Knight to f3, d6, d4, c takes d, knight takes on d4, knight to f6, knight c3, and g6 by Magnus entering the dragon Sicilian. This is often not seen at the highest level since black often just comes under a direct attack on the king. With the moves f3, g4, h4, this bishop comes to e3, queen d2, and it's just a disaster. As Bobby Fischer put it, you just sack, 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 and mate. Of course, it's not so simple, and Lanier goes for bishop to e3, bishop to g7 by Magnus, f3, a6, queen to d2, and h5. A side variation here, not allowing g4 right away, and also preventing bishop to, uh, from coming to h6. Now, a drawback of this move is that it can easily be targeted later by moves like h3 and g4, and also keeps the king in the center for the moment. Lanier here goes for bishop to c4, knight b to d7 by Magnus, Lanier castles queenside and b5, expanding on the queenside and giving the bishop on c8 a square here on b7, which will be very nicely placed in order that Magnus wants to go for some e65 in the future. Bishop to b3. Now, another interesting variation here that I've seen many times is instead of going bishop to b3, is to go for this bishop to d5 maneuver. The knight has to capture on d5, otherwise the rook on a8 has no uh, squares to go to. e takes on d5, and although the computer says black is fine here, the open e file from which this rook can come in and put pressure, plus this knight is coming to c6, I find it very difficult and very scary to play this position with, uh, with black. Instead, after bishop to b3, knight to c5 by Magnus, and king to b1. I like this prophylactic move a lot. Now, if black ever captures here on b3 with the knight, we can capture with the c pawn, and then this rook can slide over and just take control over the c file. Of course, Magnus is not going to capture right away and it's going to keep the tension as long as possible, and he goes for bishop to b7 instead. Rook h2 e1 by Lanier. H3, trying to play G4 and open up the king side was also a candidate strong move. For example, something like this. Rook C8, Bishop to G5, and Magnus finally castles his king. Knight D5 by Lanier, taking advantage of the bishop on G5, exerting pressure on the pawn on E7. E6 by Magnus, attacking the knight, captures on F6, and here white goes for H4 very much forcing black to recapture on g5. Bishop takes on g5, h takes on g5, and now the stage is set for some future opening of the h file and mate. Notice that if this pawn ever gets to g4, if this pawn takes, then the rook and the queen are going to slide over and deliver checkmate on the king. Because of this, Magnus goes for king to g7, he's anticipating all of this g4 stuff, and if this ever happens, then he can play his rook to h8 and protect everything. Queen to e3 by white, trying to use the pin down the d-fire for some future f5. So notice here that this rook is threatening the queen on d8. So if this pawn ever moves here and this pawn takes knight to f5 check, pawn captures and the queen is lost. Of course, Magnus goes queen to c7, sidestepping the threat. And Lanier goes for rook to d2. He wants to double his rooks on the d file and put pressure on the pawn on d6. b4 by Magnus, rook e to the uh, rook e d1, rook f to d8, and here white goes for queen f4. A strong move, but now that the rook on h8 was not possible because the d6 pawn would actually fall, I think g4 was a much stronger move. Queen to e7 by black. The game is still very sharp, and anything could still happen. Knight to e2 by white, a5 by Magnus. And this move is actually a mistake, overlooking a clever move and reply that white has. e5, d5, 
and g4. Lanier returns the favor since he missed the idea as well. Instead, bishop c4 is the move that both players missed. Actually, about 30 seconds after Magnus played d5, it was visible on the camera on the camera feed that he had spotted this idea himself. If pawn takes on c4 now, then queen to f6 just simply loses. Instead, g4 is played. H takes on g4, queen f6 now. The difference is that the bishop is no longer on, on c4, and in some cases the knight can actually capture there first. Queen takes on f6, pawn takes on, uh, g pawn takes on f6, and queen to h6. And Magnus plays this super blunder in less than one second. In this position, Lanier had less than one minute, and after burning 40 seconds, he came up with rook to h1 check. Magnus was completely busted in the previous position, but with little time on the clock, I understand why Lanier went for this line instead, which at first sight also looks winning, but black now has enough resources to save the game. Instead of rook to h1 check, what should have happened was rook to d4, after which g5 is forced, rook takes on g4, king has to come to g6, rook d to g1, knight to e4, f takes e4, d takes e4, and after the rook captures, captures on g5, king to h6, and the rook returns to g2, it will be mate in the next move, and Magnus would have lost this game. Instead, after rook to h1 check, Magnus goes for king to g5, and from here, the next few moves Magnus plays like the engine he is known for. f4 check, king to f5, and just look at Magnus's king. It's surrounded by pawns. If another pawn would have been in this square, this would have been a very interesting position to play. Rook to f1, now with the huge threat of knight to g3 checkmate, so Magnus has to go for g5. Knight to d4 check, king to g6, f5 check, e takes f5, knight takes on f5, and g3, the only move again. Rook g2 by white, knight to e4, knight takes on g3, and rook e8. The engine's number one move, and the only move to keep the advantage. The idea is to prevent the e6 break. Knight takes on e4, d takes e4, e6, f takes e6, and now we see the importance of this rook to e8 move, since now the bishop from b3 cannot capture the pawn on e6. Instead, white had to go for f7, rook f8, and now bishop takes e6. The difference now with the pawn on f7 is that at some point that pawn will drop and Magnus is simply going to be up a pawn. Rook c5, the rook wants to shift itself to this square on e5, it's also protecting the pawn on g5, and from e5, it can play this move bishop to d5, and the f7 pawn will be lost. Rook g3 by white, rook to e5, bishop g4, e3, king to c1, and finally rook takes on f7. And rook f7 here by white. And this move was forced. If you had gone for bishop to h5, trying to win the exchange, this loses to king takes, rook takes, and e2, and you cannot stop this pawn from queening. Instead, after rook takes on f7 and king takes on f7, we have king to d1, king to f6, king e1, bishop to d5 attacking the pawn on a2 with the bishop. So white had to go for a3. Now that the pawns have been traded, there's a, smudge, uh, there's a small little detail in this position. That this bishop here is actually on the wrong square for this a pawn. So if everything gets traded, the bishop from uh, that's standing here on g4 can actually be sacrificed for this pawn here, and the game will be a theoretical draw. Bishop to e4 is played, rook takes on e3, bishop takes on c2, king d2, there's a trade of rooks, and king to e5. And it's very surprising that Magnus agreed to reach this position, and he gave the pawn on e3 so easily, knowing that there's a lot of ways now that white can save the game. Of course, Magnus is still winning, but he's going to need a lot of work to do. Bishop to f3, there's just going to be a lot of maneuvering back and forth now in order to create squares for each of the pieces. Bishop to c6, king to d6 attacking the bishop, the bishop returns to f3, and king to c5. Of course, Magnus cannot push his own pawn because the bishop will simply just sacrifice itself for it and the game will be a theoretical draw.
bishop to e2, keeping an eye on the g4 square. Bishop to g6, bishop f1, bishop h5, king to e4, bishop d1, king e3, g4. Magnus finally decides it's time to push the pawn. Bishop to a6, bishop f3, the bishop returns to f1, bishop c6, and king to f4. In this winning position, Magnus makes a fatal blunder with king to d4, allowing white to capture the pawn on g4 with the king. Instead, the winning line was bishop to b5. If these bishops get traded now on b5, then black will simply go king here, king here, and there's no way to stop this pawn from queening. Instead, uh, after bishop b5, you have to go bishop to g2, bishop d7 now, protecting the pawn on g4, and after bishop to e4, the king comes to c4, and black will be able to win the pawn on a3 by a simple maneuver of king, king here, king here, and king taking the pawn, and the game will be over. Instead, Magnus allows, after king to d4, the king to capture on g4, and now the game is a, is a theoretical draw. The king comes to c3, king to f5, king to b2, and king to e5, and Lanier returns the favor, and Magnus is winning again. Instead, bishop to e2, king takes on e3, king f4, king to b3, bishop d1 check, king c3, king e3, and the bishop from this diagonal here cannot be pushed away, and the a-pawn can never be uh, advanced forward because the bishop will simply take, and this would have saved the game for white. But after king to e5, we have king takes on e3, the king attacks the bishop, the bishop goes away, keeping an eye on this diagonal here, which is very important. The king goes to c5, a4 now, the bishop goes to c4, king b2, king b4, a3, and this pawn just needs one more push and the game will be over. Bishop to d5, keeping an eye still on this diagonal, it has to stay there for as long as possible. The bishop comes to g6, it wants to reroute itself to here and there, kicking away this bishop from the diagonal. Bishop to e6, bishop b1, bishop e4, uh, bishop d5, bishop there, the bishop moves, bishop returns to f7, now we have control of this diagonal, but here black, um, white has one final trick, he goes for bishop to b1, but after bishop to b3, white is in sook swing, and white had to resign the game. Hope everyone enjoyed this game. Magnus has now won four games in a row. And I guess this is the therapy that he needs for all the bad playing he's done lately. Let's hope he continues winning as everyone enjoys when Magnus is on top. Thanks for watching. And as always, stay safe, have a great day, and show respect to your opponent. See you next time.